let's talk about this chip right here. This is the 555 timer. One of the most popular chips on the face of the earth. You will find it in just about every consumer appliance made. That yeah, one's got a little broken leg. We'll have to get it to the emergency room. It has a bunch of things it can do. It is an incredibly useful chip, so let's take a look at what it can do and talk about what the pins are. The 555 is an 8-pin chip. One. Have our little mark here. So this is pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Shlemiel, Shlemazel. Uh, no, 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 sorry. Wrong show. All right, so pin 1 is ground. Pin 2 is our trigger. Pin 3 is our output. Pin 4 is our reset. Pin 5 is... Did I not focus that? Focus. Pin 5 is control voltage. Pin 6 is our threshold. Pin 7 is our discharge. And pin 8 is our VN. So basically what happens when something pulls the trigger pin low we get a high pulse on the output pin. Now the chip can operate in a couple different ways. One is the mono stable mode which means if we connect a tack switch via a 10k resistor to ground here and then we connect this side to our VN every time we press this switch it will output a high pulse on the output but the timing can be controlled through some resistors and capacitors up here on these chips so let's take a look at a little circuit I built and we'll show you how it's our mono stable circuit pin 1 is going to ground pin 2 is going to this tack switch and it's normally held high with a 10k resistor but when you press the switch it will be pulled to ground pin 3 is our output to this LED which it has a 150 ohm resistor pin 4 is our reset and is not used in this case pin 5 our control voltage goes over to this little 1 microfarad ceramic cap and is then pulled to ground pin 6 goes to our timing capacitor which then goes to ground this is 22 microfarad pin 6 is also tied to pin 7 via this jumper pin 7 has this timing resistor on it which goes to pin 8 and pin 8 goes to our VCC now I'm going to put some voltage on here and when we press the button we're going to get about a two second pulse there you go now you can change the timing of the circuit by changing the capacitor and the resistor this is a 100k resistor which I say gives us about two seconds if we take that out and put in a 10k resistor it's going to be almost instantaneous whoops that would be the one meg resistor I grabbed by accident and it is going to go for about 23 seconds <laughs> so always pay attention to your resistor values 
once that's out okay so that was the one meg resistor here is the 10k resistor like i said it's almost instantaneous now one of the things about the way the 555 works in this one shot mono stable mode is that there is a latching circuit inside of it so when the it's pressed you're only going to get one click so you really don't have to worry about the bounce here see i can push this a couple times and you're still going to get just the one hit off of it all right now let's take a look at a way that we can use the 555 to trigger other circuits all right deeply buried in the middle of all these wires is a cd 4017 from texas instruments it's a decade counter and what it does is every time it receives a pulse it lights up an led in sequence so give it a pulse lights up the next led give it another pulse the next led and so on and so on and so on but what if there was a way we could send pulses to this without having to keep pressing the buttons there is it's called putting the 555 into a stable mode and let's take a look at that right now Alrighty. so this is the a stable mode basically it is self triggering it is a free running a stable multi vibrator so pin one still goes to ground pin eight still goes to vcc pin two our trigger pin is looped over to pin six our threshold but pin two also has a timing capacitor going to ground and as this charges and discharges this is what is going to generate our internal pulse pin 3 is our trigger just like before pin 4 is our reset we're not dealing with it right now pin number 5 we have a one microfarad capacitor going to ground pin number 6 goes to one side of our voltage divider and pin number 6 also comes over here to pin 2 pin number 7 is the other side of our voltage divider which goes to vcc and pin number eight like i said is our vn so let's give it some juice and you see we still have just about a two second pulse so let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing now here we have our decade counter whoa do not ask me how that happened but if i plug the decade counter into the trigger here i don't know what happened there let's try this again Need some loose wires or something. Oh, duh. There we go. Now, with our decade counter is the trigger. Every time this thing triggers, we get a f another pulse. Now. if we change either our timing resistors or our timing capacitor you can see we can change the speed of the counter now you could also put in a variable resistor into one half of your voltage divider and you could control the pulse speed 
but we're not worried about that today. So now you know a little bit more about the 555 timer. If you like this, I hope you give me a thumbs up, share it, feel free to comment. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what the heck are you waiting for?